Hi, I'm Tom Scarpello of Revology Cars, and this is car number 162, a 1966 Mustang GT convertible in passion pink metallic with ivory Napa leather interior. Today, I'm gonna to take you on a walk around of this car, and we're gonna go for a drive. Let's get started. Okay, 1966 Mustang GT convertible, passion pink metallic. This is not a Ford color, this is a Bentley color. It is a very rich metallic, almost candy pink. Um, I feel like I want to lick it. It is, really, I really like it. I wasn't sure I was gonna like it, but I, I think it's really sharp. And you know, maybe this is what Playmate pink might have been had Ford had access to the kind of paint technology that's available today, but it's a super sharp color, Re really, really nice. The GT, uh, as with all Revology GTs, fog lamps in the front, like the original at the side, the GT badge and the, uh, the white rocker stripe with the Mustang letters, 17 inch styled aluminum wheels. At the back, the GT fuel cap and the GT exhaust trumpets that exit through the rear valance. Okay, on the interior, so this is the full leather. Uh, this is a Mercedes ivory, um, in German, porcelain leather. Um, the dash is a burgundy. The carpet is a matching burgundy. Um, walnut steering wheel. This car is equipped with the six style cluster with the laser cut aluminum trim. Uh, the car is equipped with premium audio with the touch screen uh, that also features a reverse camera. Automatic transmission is the 10R80, which we've been using for a while, very happy with it. You know, overall, you know, a great vintage looking interior with some real modern conveniences, which makes the car a lot easier to, uh, to live with. All right, so let's go for a drive. Here we are on the hottest summer ever in recorded human history and uh, we're in Florida on top of that and we're going to go for a drive with the top down. So I, I didn't really know <clears throat> what I was going to think of the passion pink but I shouldn't have worried because honestly any color you put on an early Mustang looks great just because the design is flawless. I mean it, there's no bad angle on this car. It's one of the few cars I think in the history of automobiles that has this kind of timeless design. There's so few products, you know, overall <clears throat> in any segment that really have a truly timeless design. I mean, the, um, you know, thinking of a few Rolex Daytona watch, uh, Fender Stratocaster guitar, uh, Les Paul guitar, the uh, Airstream trailer, you know, it's a handful of products. When they, you know, a company really gets the design right, it truly just has an infinite shelf life. And uh, it, it's very remarkable. And, and the thing is, no one's really figured out what's the magic formula, you know, to get it. it, it when it happens, it's just, I don't know, maybe like a hit song or something. And so you just everything kind of comes together and if you really knew what it was, you could duplicate it consistently. But, you know, as we see, you look at automotive design today and, you know, some designs are just really conservative and some just go expressive to the point of being ridiculous and, and they're not quite hitting the mark. Think about, uh, you know, why, why that is, you know, you look at, look at Ford today, I mean, it's, really a truck company you know the company only has one car in the lineup now the Mustang and you know the Mustang the last 10 years the best sales year was not quite 125,000 units to put that in, I mean it sounds like a lot but in the car business it's not you know to put that in perspective back in the 1990s, the Thunderbird and Cougar sold more than that, and they were canceled because they just didn't make business sense. But Mustang is more than about 
revenue and profit for Ford. The company really recognizes the image value, knows it's got this passionate fan base out there. And that's really the reason that they keep Mustang around. But I think the flip side of that is that they, they don't really get very innovative with it. They, they sort of follow the direction of their current customer base. They really study the market research intently and kind of serve up an evolutionary new product, you know, and not really an innovative or, revol or revolutionary new product. And I think, you know, with Mustang today, you know, Ford's got this little icon um, and, uh, you know, there's nothing they can do that's going to hurt Mustang. That, that brand has survived through so many, uh, there's so many mediocre cars that had a Mustang badge stuck to it and it survived and it's very strong. You know, I, I mean, why not, you know, take some risk, you know? You know, anyway, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm, I'm glad that the company's still investing in it. I'm glad they're going racing. There's a big commitment to racing. That's, that's great. Um, but we'll see. So to wrap it up, you know, the kind of all comes back to the timelessness of the design. So you might think that with these iconic designs, in its portfolio that Ford would just bring out this exact car as a new model, the way that you know Fender produces new Stratocaster guitars that look identical to the ones that they made in the 50s and 60s. The thing is, with in automotive, you can't do that because you've got um, a lot of legislation governing how automobiles must be designed and the standards that they must meet, uh, which is where companies like Revology come in and um, kind of fill that unmet need. So, you know, we see a lot of growth in this segment. Um, it's relatively speaking, still going to always be very small compared to the OEMs, but we do see a lot of a lot of growth potential because because of the appeal of these products. You know, they're they're so iconic, and to be able to just get in and just drive around and not worry about anything and just enjoy the drive, it it's really a special experience. And that's what we do. The other day, I walked in the office. We've got a blackboard on the wall, and somebody had scrawled in chalk we build dreams and I thought yeah yeah that guy gets it that's what we do we build dreams <laughs>